Welcome to lecture 4 of chapter 21, Lipid Biosynthesis. This lecture will focus on the regulation of cholesterol biosynthesis and transport. In addition, it will also focus on the dysregulation of cholesterol metabolism that can lead to cardiovascular diseases. Cholesterol synthesis and transport are regulated at several levels. As I said before, cholesterol biosynthesis is a complex process and it is extremely energy demanding. Excess cholesterol cannot be catabolized for use as fuel and must be excreted. Therefore, it is clearly an advantage to an organism to regulate the biosynthesis of cholesterol to complement dietary intake. There are various modes of regulation of cholesterol synthesis and transport that exist in mammals. The first one is a covalent modification of HMG-CoA reductase where HMG-CoA reductase gets phosphorylated and as a result is inactive. Transcription regulation of HMG-CoA gene can also happen. In addition, HMG-CoA reductase can be proteolytically degraded in the proteasome so as to regulate cholesterol synthesis. Transcription regulation via liver X receptors also happens. Finally, activation of ACAT, which increases esterification for cholesterol storage, and transcription regulation to downgrade LDL expression could also lead to cholesterol regulation. Short-term regulation of cholesterol biosynthesis is accomplished by phosphorylating HMG-CoA and this is catalyzed by AMP dependent protein kinase. When ATP levels are down and when AMP level rises, AMP dependent protein kinase phosphorylates HMG-CoA. HMG-CoA is inactivated when it's phosphorylated. As a result, cholesterol synthesis goes down. The hormones glucagon and epinephrine also activates AMP dependent protein kinase. As a result, HMG-CoA is phosphorylated and its activity goes down. In the presence of insulin, HMG-CoA is dephosphorylated and as a result, HMG-CoA activity increases, leading to pr production of mevalonate. This figure reiterates the point that I made on the previous slide. As you may know, HMG-CoA reductase catalyzes the conversion of HMG-CoA to mevalonate. And phosphorylation of HMG-CoA by AMP inhibits this process. Glucagon and epinephrine also inhibits conversion of HMG-CoA to mevalonate. However, insulin activates the conversion of HMG-CoA to mevalonate. In addition, oxysterol, which is a metabolite of cholesterol, can stimulate proteolytic cleavage of HMG-CoA reductase, thus inhibiting the conversion of HMG-CoA to mevalonate. Oxysterol can also inhibit receptor-mediated receptor endocytosis of LDL carrying cholesterol into cells, thus decreasing cholesterol inside the cells. ACAT can decrease cholesterol levels by phosphorylating cholesterol to cholesterol esters. Long-term regulation of cholesterol biosynthesis is achieved through the transcriptional control of HMG-CoA gene and this is accomplished with the help of sterile regulatory element binding proteins or SREBPS in shock. When sterile levels are high, SREBPS are retained in the ER membrane with other binding proteins. When sterile levels decline, the SREBP complex is cleaved 
and the regulatory fragment of SREBP moves to the nucleus. The regulatory fragment of SRBP activates transcription of HMG-CoA reductase, the LDL receptor, as well as other genes. The image shown here conveys the function of sterol regulatory element binding proteins in the transcriptional control of HMG-CoA reductase. As shown here, the SRBPS complex is made up of three proteins, SREBP, SCAP, and INSIG. SCAP is SREBP cleavage activating protein. INSIG is insulin induced gene protein. As you could see, after synthesis, the SREBP complex is embedded on the ER membrane. And when the sterol levels are high, sterol and oxysterol binds to SCAP and INSIG respectively. When the sterol levels drop, the interaction of sterols with these two proteins are no longer there. And as a result, the binding of INSIG to SCAP protein diminishes. INSIG is then targeted for ubiquitin-mediated proteasome degradation. And the other protein or uh, SEC protein escorts SCAP and SREBP to the Golgi complex. As you can see here, the, the bold green line shown is the regulatory domain in SREBP. Once SREBP is transported to the Golgi apparatus, two proteases work in tandem to cleave SREBP and release the regulatory domain. The regulatory domain that is released then travels to the nucleus. It enters the nucleus and initiates the transcription of HMG-CoA reductase, the LDL receptors, and other lipid synthesizing proteins. In the long term, the level of HMG-CoA reductase is also regulated by proteolytic degradation of the enzyme itself. High levels of cellular cholesterol are sensed by INSIG, which triggers attachment of ubiquitin molecules to HMG-CoA reductase, leading to its degradation by proteasomes. Cholesterol biosynthesis is also regulated by the liver X receptor. Liver X receptor is a nuclear transcription factor activated by oxysterol ligands. This is reflective of high cholesterol levels. LXR binds to retinoid X receptor or RXR and activate transcription of a host of genes. How does this process happen? And this is depicted on the image shown here. When there is no ligand present, RXR and LXR associate with a core repressor protein, preventing transcription of genes associated with the LXR element. So as you could see here, there is no transcription of any genes in the presence of a core repressor protein. When ligands are present, that is 9-cis-retinoic acid for RXR and oxysterols for LXR, these two proteins, dimers, dissociate from the core repressor protein and associate with a co-activator protein. This complex binds to the LXR element and turns on expression of the associated genes. The genes that are activated by the LXR element includes those that are involved in bile acid synthesis, glucose uptake, and lipid biosynthesis. Finally, two other regulatory mechanisms influence cellular cholesterol levels. The first one is ACAT activation. High cellular concentrations of cholesterol activate ACAT, 
which increases the esterification of cholesterol for storage. The second one is decreased LDL receptor expression. High cellular cholesterol levels diminish transcription of the gene that encodes the LDL receptor via SREBP. This reduces LDL receptor expression and thus a decreased uptake of cholesterol from blood. As I explained before, cholesterol cannot be catabolized by animal cells. When the sum of cholesterol synthesized and cholesterol obtained in the diet exceeds the amount required for the cells, it can lead to pathological conditions such as atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis is a cardiovascular disease that can lead to occluded coronary arteries and this can result in heart failure. Atherosclerosis is linked to high levels of LDL cholesterol or bad cholesterol and there is a correlation between high LDL cholesterol and atherosclerosis. This is in spite of the fact that many heart attack victims have normal cholesterol and many people with high cholesterol do not have heart attacks. In addition, low high density lipoprotein cholesterol levels are negatively correlated with heart disease. Atherosclerosis is a direct result of cholesterol accumulation in arteries. This is called as plaque formation. How do plaques form? This image gives a really good description as to how plaques form. Plaque formation in blood vessels, as shown here, is initiated when LDL containing partially oxidized fatty acyl groups adhere to and accumulates in the extracellular matrix of epithelial cells lining the arteries. Immune cells such as monocytes are attracted to regions with such LDL accumulations and they differentiate into macrophages which take up the oxidized LDL and the cholesterol they contain. Macrophages cannot limit their uptake of sterols and with increasing accumulation of cholesterol esters and free cholesterol, the macrophage then become a foam cell. The name foam cell because they appear foamy under a microscope. As excess free cholesterol accumulates in foam cells and their membranes, the cells undergo apoptosis. Over long periods of time, arteries become progressively occluded as plaques consisting of extracellular matrix material, scar tissue formed from smooth muscle tissue and foam cell remnants gradually become larger. Occasionally, a plaque breaks loose from the side of formation, such as this, and it gets carried through the blood to a narrow region in an artery in the brain or the heart causing a stroke or a heart attack. Familial hypercholesterolemia is a genetic disorder in which blood levels of cholesterol are extremely high and severe atherosclerosis develops in childhood. Individuals with this disorder have a defective LDL receptor and lack receptor mediated uptake of cholesterol carried by LDL. Consequently, cholesterol is not cleared from the blood and as a result, it accumulates in foam cells and contributes to the formation of atherosclerotic plaques. In addition, Regulation mechanisms based on cholesterol sensing inside the cells don't work for these individuals. A class of drugs called statins are used to treat patients with elevated serum cholesterol caused by familial hypercholesterolemia and other conditions. Statins resemble mevalonate in the structure and hence are competitive inhibitors of HMG-CoA reductase. 
The first statin, lower statin, was found in fungi. It is known to lower serum cholesterol by about tens of percent. It is also reported to improve circulation, stabilize plaques by removing cholesterol from them, and reduce vascular inflammation. As I explained before, HDL plays a critical role in the reverse cholesterol transport pathway, reducing the potential damage from foam cell buildup. Depleted HDL, or HDL low in cholesterol, picks up cholesterol that is stored in extrahepatic tissues or non-liver tissues, including foam cells at growing plaques. HDL then carries this cholesterol back to the liver. How is this process explained? Cholesterol movement out of cells requires transporters. There are two transporters in mammalian cells that can transport cholesterol out of the cells. These are ABCA1 and ABCG1. ABCA1 can transport cholesterol from inside a foam cell to the outside where ApoA1 can take up and transport it back to liver. In the same way, a mature HDL can interact with ABCG1. ABCG1 can transport cholesterol from outside, from inside a foam cell to outside where mature, mature HDL can take it up and carry back to the liver. This efflux process is particularly critical to reverse cholesterol transport pathway that takes cholesterol away from cells at the sites of plaques in blood vessels of individuals with cardiovascular diseases. Now, in familial HDL deficiency, there is very low HDL levels. And in Tangier disease, there is almost no HDL that you can find. Both genetic disorders are a result of mutations in the ABCA1 protein. ApoA1 in cholesterol-depleted HDL cannot take up cholesterol from cells that lack ABCA1 protein, and ApoA1 and cholesterol-poor HDL are rapidly removed from the blood and destroyed. Both familial HDL deficiency and Tangier disease are extremely rare. 